What's up, Minneapolis? Y'all MFers trying to flip some houses? I hope so. I hope you're in Minneapolis. I hope you're just getting started in house flipping. I hope you want to learn how to flip houses. And I hope you're down to have a good time while doing it. Let's jump into some info on flipping some property! This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and what I do is I help people like you invest in real estate, right? Wholesaling, Airbnb, long-term rental, short-term rental, big buildings, little buildings, we do it all, right? And today I'm working with an investor from Minneapolis, Minnesota. His name is Mark, and Mark wants to flip some houses. Now, as I speak, it is 2022, February 2022. A couple things we need to understand about this date. Number one, I sent this video privately to Mark long time ago. So if you're not Mark and you're watching this on Holton Wise TV, this deal that I'm about to go over, don't don't send me an email like, Dad James, that one flipped that house that you did. That house is so cool. Screw Mark. Bruh, set this to Mark privately long time ago. Can't flip this house. This house gone. You want to work with me one-on-one -on -one to flip a house like this one, get your own customized set of videos like my dude Mark is doing below the show, right? In your phone, on your computer, if you're on your TV, I, well, you got to go to your phone or your computer. I don't think you could fill out uh, the information to book a call on your TV. But all the other devices you can, your tablet, your iPad, whatever, man. That's how you work with me one-on-one -on -one in real time like my boy Mark is doing. Now, here's the plot twist of the century, folks. Haven't even said this yet. Y'all about to get flipped. Flipped like this house. Get it? <laughs> that was a joke. I'm hilarious. Now. This is the plot twist of the century. The house we're going to flip, not in Minneapolis. Everybody's brain just exploded. Y'all freaking out. Yeah, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I believe. Live where you want, invest where it makes sense. Mark, you live in Minneapolis. Seems like you got a good life out there. I ain't trying to get your ass to move, right? I don't want you driving into my hotel. I'm like, that James, let's drive around. Let's go look at cool houses. Like, fuck that, right? I don't, don't want to do that. I don't want you trying to get me to get your family house set up here and talk to your wife about drapes so we can set up your house flipping business. Nah, we don't need to do that. I ain't trying to make anybody move. I want you to invest where it makes sense, and I want you to live where it makes sense, right? I want you guys to live where you want to live. Now, Mark, I want you to continue to live in Minneapolis because I'm assuming it's great for you out there. But your problem is, you're like, dude, I cannot get any deals out here, bro. The market moves, folks. It's 2022. As I said, there's two important things about it being 2022, February 2022. Number one, I already sent this video to Mark. Number two, real estate is really expensive in 2022, folks. It's expensive everywhere. And some markets are getting hit worse than others. Some markets are facing an inventory shortage worse than others. Minneapolis, it's too hard for Mark, too hard for a lot of you out there to find deals that make sense. So what do we do, folks? We don't have to pack up and move. We can continue to live there, but we don't have to keep beating our heads against the wall. If there ain't no deals, there ain't no deals. So we got to live where we want, invest where it makes sense. And Mark hooked up with me because my team goes where the deals go, right? And right now, Mark, me and you, we're looking at doing some flips in Northeast Ohio. We've been going over that market. I've been giving you a ton of videos, ton of content on that market. You're starting to get a feel for it. And you sent me this particular property, and you're like, yo, bro, this looks like a pretty good deal to me. Why don't you go ahead and run them numbers for me, JYs? Run them numbers. Let me know what the deal ski is because if y'all haven't been paying attention to the show, Mark's from Minneapolis. This property is in Northeast Ohio. He don't know a lot about Northeast Ohio because why would he, right? He lives in Minneapolis, right? But if he's going to flip houses and be successful, he needs to understand the Cleveland market. 
And that's what I do for him. So, Mark, without further ado, brother, let's go to a quick break. And I'm going to break out the numbers on this flip. And guess what? I'm looking at the chart right now. I already drew it up before the show. I'm projecting a $68,000 profit. Ooh. Let's do it. There are two sides to wholesaling. Bodacious marketing to attract motivated sellers and data-driven analytics. Together, they're a match made in heaven. This is our wholesaling course. Let the lake and buy the doors! Welcome back, folks. We gonna pull up these numbers! This deal right here, folks. This deal ski, your boy, your boy Jay Wise, want to show you how to pull off a flip ski on this deal ski. Now, if everything goes according to my plan here, I drew the plan right here. Plan, this the plan, okay? If everything goes according to that, this could make you $68,000. Is this guaranteed to work? Absolutely! Buy now! Ding, 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 ding! I'm just fucking playing. No, motherfuckers, this isn't guaranteed to work. This is real fucking life. If you think that there is some fucking asshole out there, he's like, Hey, you got guaranteed to make 68 grand to flip this house. Just buy my course. You're a fucking idiot, and you deserve to get ripped off by that guy. No. No, this is not guaranteed, people. Real estate is a tough business. Will it be possible to make 68 grand? Yeah, and I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do it. But there ain't nothing guaranteed in this business. This is a numbers game, okay? This is a numbers game. That's what you need to realize first and foremost. Before I even get into the details on this thing, you need to know, if you want to make money flipping houses, you got to get ready to send out a lot of offers, right? Flipping's hard. I make it easy, but it's still a hard business, right? The reason I make it easy is because I have all the other stuff you're going to need. I have the ability to resell it for you. I have the team to handle the renovations. I have the knowledge to tell you a correct ARV. I have the sales skills uh, to go in and negotiate with sellers. I understand what we're doing, so I make it all easy. But at the end of the day, once you have all that, you still need to make a lot of offers to get things to work, right? Because the seller wants 299000 Okay? Why wouldn't it? Sellers, typically that's how it works, folks. Sellers, when they sell properties, they want as much money as they can get. When you're a buyer trying to flip properties, you're trying to get a super duper cheap, right? So we have to come up with a price that actually makes sense for you as an investor. We have to back up that price with data so you know you're not going to lose your ass on the deal. And then we got to pump it out to the seller. And if the seller says no, we move on to the next and the next and the next and the next and the next. Congratulations. Now you're a house flipper. That's part of the house flipping business. There ain't no scenario, despite what other guru program you watch, where you go, I will flip that house. And then you go up to Mr. Seller. I will give you a low offer. I will flip your house. And they're like, oh, thank you. I will you flip my house. You're going to make 68 grand. This is so great. Bah, 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 bah. That don't happen, right? It's a numbers game. Now, with that said, here's what we got. Here's what we got. 6871 Hickory Hill, Mayfield Village, Ohio, 44143. This is the Cleveland market. Now, you got to understand your ARV. You got to understand your market. got to understand what you have here, right? I've created a cheat sheet for you guys. It's called the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. You know it's in the show notes below. You know it's on HoltonWise.com on our Tools and Resources tab. Now, I graded all the areas on A to F. Now, I get a lot of heat, right? I've had a few, like, at this point, like, three to five, maybe 10, 15, I don't know. Bunch of liberal publications, just a bunch of freaking chode tuggers out there uh, dropping out articles and publishing articles, calling that guide horrible and accusing me of redlining or this or that. You know, they've even gone so far as to call it racist, right? Find that to be crazy. I don't give a shit what color you are. Black, white, blue, green. Well, green. Green. That's, that's all that matters. It's green. It's about the green. Mark, Bill, Tom, Ted, Jerome, Dave, Christy, Melissa. Doesn't matter to me who you are, what you got going on, right? You want to invest in real estate? I'm going to give you a clear picture of what you're buying, the risks, the rewards, how the whole thing should play out. That's it. That's what I do. And you shouldn't take this guide as A is amazing, F is horrible. No, no, no. That's not what it's really about, right? It, it's a guide that gives you something to, to measure it by, a measuring stick, so to speak, right? It's kind of like uh, in the 
in the shows you watch where some motherfucker killed some other motherfucker and the police are trying to figure that shit out. And there's like a picture of a boot, like a footprint in the dirt. And they always put like a ruler or like a dollar bill next to it. You get some type of scale to figure out exactly, uh, you know, the size of it. Right. You need a, a point of reference. Right. So this this guide A, B, C, D and F properties. Right. F is highest possible risk, lowest possible pricing. A is lowest possible risk, highest possible price. When I say risk, I mean like risk of crime, property damage, things of that nature. People in the F neighborhoods make the least amount of money per household income. People in the A neighborhoods make the most. Every real estate strategy is different, right? Like I don't think real estate investors, buy and hold investors, make a lot of money in the A grade neighborhoods as buy and hold investors. I also think out-of-state investors do very poorly in F-grade neighborhoods. But I think local cats can do a lot better in F-grade neighborhoods. My sweet spot for long-term rentals is usually like D or C, okay? Uh, so it's not necessarily what's good, what's bad. People are like, oh, this is a good neighborhood. Good neighborhood for what, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like this neighborhood, I have graded in A because this is where the wealthy folk live. This is where the houses have very high ARVs, right? You could take this same house, right, in the ARV, what I'm expecting us to sell this for when we're done with it is 400 grand. Well, you could slap this fucking house in an F grade neighborhood, and the some bitch ain't gonna sell for 400 grand, right? It is what it is. So I'm giving you guys who are coming out of the area, you know, a reference guide. And again, as I said, all those liberal freaking chode tuggers out there like to, uh, you know, publish their articles and say things that aren't true, right? So I'm sure if you do a little Googling, you can find all those. Uh, but that's what we have. So here we have an A-grade neighborhood, meaning we're going to have a lot of owner-occupied people making a lot of money. We're going to have a decent ARV, 400 k right? I don't make the prices, folks. I report on the market. I didn't create the market. That's just what it is. Now, what we have is a house that, by all intents and purposes, looks like we can get away with just a cosmetic fix, right? It's dated, okay? It's ugly. It's dark. It's dingy. Now, I don't think we need to do much other than cosmetically fix this thing up. The seller wants you to pay $299,000. You cannot pay $299,000 because I have two, two comps for you, right? These are the two best comps I could illustrate for you of what I believe we will sell it for. Down the street, 488 Hickory Hill, Mayfield Village. This one sold for three hundred sixty dollars okay? That's $60,000 above our seller's asking price. Now, as you go through this, what you will see is the house is still dated. Much cleaner, much nicer, much more updated, but it is not exactly what buyers are looking for today in 2022. This is definitely a dated house. So our ARV, I believe, is much higher than this one, but this is a good uh, parameter. This is a good measuring stick for us, right? This is something that was probably updated like 15 years ago, okay? So we are going to provide our buyers with something nicer than this. We are going to provide our buyers with something more similar to this one. 6843 Metro Park Drive, Mayfield Village. Okay, this one sold for 415k, okay? But this one is a little larger, okay? But this is more uh, or less what we're going to want it to look like. A little more updated, okay? You see the nicer kitchen floor there. You got the gray walls. It's just this is more modern. Ours will honestly still be even a little bit more modern than this one, uh, but you have more updated fixtures in this one. So this, this particular house is going to have uh, more of an indication of what I want ours to look like. But, like, you know, we also don't have, like, you know, this sweet ass uh, like turnaround driveway, though. Right. So you got to you know, you got to be honest with yourself about what you do have, what you don't have. Right. So even though we'll be a little more modern, like this house is still worth a little more money. So that's why for this particular property, I've put our ARV conservatively at 400 K. Now, what we're all usually trying to do when we do flips is we're trying to get in at 75% of the after repair value minus the cost of our repairs, right? So we already know our ARV, folks, 400K. That means we can pay 249000 We got to get the seller to come down 51K, which coincidentally is the amount of money we're probably going to need to do what I want, to fix it up cosmetically on the inside. You can see the breakdown right here. Paint and patching the walls. We're looking at 8 Gs, looking at another 8 Gs for the floor, dropping about a 20 spot in that kitchen, and then rounding that out with another 15 
in the bathrooms, right? So it should amount to roughly 51K for all that stuff. Uh, this is COVID days, uh, though, folks, so prices do vary. Uh, so it's possible it could end up somewhere in the 63 range, but I think 51 is a pretty fair estimate. Now, after this, if all goes according to the plan, we pick it up at 249 and we sell it at 400 after you pay me my commission to sell that thing for you and you add in all the stuff you spent on it. You are looking at a cool profit of $68,000. Now, a couple other things to understand. This is step one of the due diligence process. Step two, we're going to make this thing, this offer contingent on a home inspection, right? Because the inspector is going to need to go in there and tell us if our roof is trashed. Tell us if we need a new furnace. Tell us if we need a new hot water tank. But with a 68K spread, folks, you could absorb all of those, right? You're probably looking at like a $8,000 roof, $3,000 furnace, $1,200 hot water tank, right? So these things are not the end of the world or anything like that. But also, too, that also allows us to negotiate further, right? We might go in, get it on our contract at 249 and then find that stuff out during the inspection and then go back to the seller, try to get the price worked out even more. Uh, yeah. W this is step one, right? This is how you do flips, folks. This is how you flip properties. This is what we did right here. So we're aiming for a 249 price. But guess what? Say everything goes out fine and the seller doesn't take 249. Well, what if they'd be willing to take uh, 259, 269, right? You'd be down to make 48K? I sure as shit hope you would because you'd be a dumb motherfucker if you wouldn't. I've laid it out pretty simple, pretty clear. Uh, it'd be a pretty easy $48,000 payday, right? But this is our starting point. So my recommendation. We go out there with a 249 price point or even higher. Uh, consider, you know, trying to get less greedy and make a little bit more or a little bit less of a spread to have a higher uh, probability of actually getting the deal done. But you got to do it for yourself. Figure out what your risk worth reward is out there and how much you're comfortable spending. I know if you look at real estate flipping and all this, everybody's got the 75 percent rule. So. I've laid out the numbers for you under those parameters. But in 2022, even though this is one of the most profitable markets for you guys out there, you got to know uh, that there's going to be a lot of buyers uh, trying to tackle a property like this. So a 249 price point uh, would be great, best case scenario. But I do not uh, project it being a super high chance of success. So I'm going to leave it up to you. I've given you the numbers to work off of. You let me know what you want to offer and what you're comfortable with. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.